like a 1-800 number, it is not me. Trust me. That is not me. <laughs> All right. Well, Eden, you were also mentored by the great healer Lily Cornford. How did she help you, and what did she teach you? Well, um, I went to her first because she was a healer, and I was very sick, and my mother found her through David Tansley at the College of Psychic Studies in London when we were living there. And so after healing me, um, after a number of times I had pneumonia for, I think, like the fourth time or something um, in in a very short period of time, uh, I started, you know, I, I was questioning what she was doing, and, and I started having time to talk to her alone, and I would explain to her about things that had happened to me all my life and things that I knew and And then I would say to her, but I don't understand. I said, I feel like there's something special about me. But I didn't mean like something like I'm this, you know, I should be like a famous person or or like I'm special, like, um, you know, that type of thing. I, I felt like I didn't understand what it was about me that was different from other people. And Lily said... You know, one of the things that she said is she said you will learn as your life unfolds. You know, she did not want to tell me, but clearly she she understood because she really took me under her wing. And she started to explain to me about um, the esoteric side of of life and the universe. Now, Lily was not only a a uh, healer who brought in brought down to the material level color healing. And color therapy, but <clears throat> she also at the time was the president of the Radionic Society, which was, and an, I don't know if they still are around, but that was long distance healing many years ago, and it was outlawed in America. It was allowed throughout Europe, but it was supposedly illegal to do <laughs> long distance healing in America or use radionics. And uh, So she was, you know, tutoring me and giving me all this marvelous information and and, and sending me to the right books to read, to understand about reincarnation and karma, to understand about some of the laws of the universe, to understand things to do with the Christ energy. And it was just, it was amazing. She also, um, after about a year, year and a half, started telling me to read Alice Bailey's books. And Alice Bailey had channeled, was was a British channeler, and she had channeled the Tibetan masters. And it started the um, Arcane School and Lucius Trust. So those were just in, incredible and very difficult things to read. They're, they're, it's almost like reading physics or, you know, quantum physics. And it, <laughs> it was tough going. But, oh, yeah. you know, but she would she would calm me down when I would get upset about things. Like I was in boarding school in, in outside of London, and you know I remember telling my roommate we were out in the in the garden, and and I said you know I don't understand. It was an old house, and it was purported that this house had been a little boys' school before my school took it over, which was a, a prep school, high school. But um, I, it was a very old house, and um, supposedly Winston Churchill's family, when he was growing up owned this house it was a you know a country house it was out outside of St Albans um about 45 miles north of of London anyway um i said i see i said i don't understand it i'm standing in the garden with you Carrie and i'm seeing like a court jester and i described his outfit and i described his shoes and the whole thing you know <laughs> We were afraid to tell anybody. I mean, well, could I, you know, tell my headmaster? He already thought I was pretty weird with uh, my intuition thing. So <laughs> I, I mm-hmm. kept it to myself until I saw Lily and I told her. You know, she started explaining that I, you know, who I was seeing, what I was seeing, and why some of it, you know, was coming to me. Um, so that What's was the, that was phenomenal. And then she was the one who also introduced uh, my mother and myself to. Um, Stephen Silver, who was a psychic medium at the time, now he does homeopathy in England, and um, he was trying to help us to deal with this black magician who was haunting the house we were living in at the time. <clears throat> but um, at some point, I'd really like to um, also speak to you a little bit in the audience a little bit about um, animal communication. 
Well, that's what I was just about to say. Why don't we talk about animal (laughs) communication? Because that's really what we're here to talk. Now that we've established who you are and the the amazing life you had and and all the wonderful experiences and the people that were mentoring you and teaching you. So what brought about your decision to go public with your work as an animal communicator? And why did you hold back on saying that you were also a psychic medium? Okay. Um, In a nutshell, saying that I was a psychic medium at that point was very dangerous for my business of interior design, my husband's and my livelihood, our only livelihood. So, and, you know, we were afraid that people would not want to hire us because of me. So I was supposed to be hush-hush about that. I was having a really hard time continuing to live hiding who I am. I mean, I really, I I can understand in a different way, you know, what's happened with Bruce Jenner turning into Caitlyn, because just hiding yourself, whoever you are, whatever is real for you and what you're really all about is very painful. And um, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not afraid to tell you, you know, my age, I'm 61 years old and I didn't decide to go public until I was 57. Mm. Um, People knew me by word of mouth only. And a lot of friends and and a number of people would hear about me. Um, And I finally couldn't stand it anymore. And I said to my husband, that's it. I either have to do, you know, spirit work as as soon as possible and, you know, continue because, of course, I was still, I was doing lots of readings for um, humans who had crossed over as well as animals and live animals. But I said, you know, I really need to do this because I can't not do it. And I've, I've tried to act normal, quote unquote, and, you know, not do any of that. And I said, I can't live that way. It's like not breathing air. So um, I said, that's it. You know, I'm turning 60. I really need to do something with my life with spirit in, in a bigger way. And I've got to go public. So when I said that to spirit, I finally said, okay, I'm ready. I'm going to do it. You know, I've been trying to avoid this on and off for all these years. Um, And by then it was like 15, 16 years I've been doing readings and, you know, on a frequent basis. And uh, anyway, immediately, you know, spirit (laughs) has a way of answering you. (laughs) Don't ask for what you're not ready for, let me tell you. Absolutely. And I think Chris and I also, you know, to a certain extent, have to come out of the closet. I was in business for many, many years. I still am in business. Mm -hmm. And it was not something Mm -hmm. that I could bring up in the business world. Chris? That's right. Yeah, I mean, for for me, it was a little bit different because um, I I had vendors working all over Manhattan for me. And business Mm -hmm. went bad after 9-11. And that's that's basically the reason why I um, embraced being a psychic it was out of necessity because if, if if I didn't, you know, I couldn't support my family because my business just basically tanked after 9-11. And um, I had to accept my abilities. Wow. So that's how it was for me, I, out of necessity. Wow. And I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm so grateful. Well, I'm not grateful about 9-11, but I'm sure. grateful that I made the decision no. to say, you know what, let me get off the streets and let me – you know, focus on what I really love doing. And, you know, mm-hmm. it, it's amazing when, when you get to that realization that this is what you're supposed to do. And, okay. you know, we all get there in different ways. You know, me mm-hmm. was out of necessity. For you, obviously, you know, not out of necessity, but you, you had a, a yearning to that this was what your life is supposed to be, you know. Mm-hmm. So we all, once we reach that point where, we realize that this is what we want to do. It's amazing how the doors open for you and, and you know, things that you didn't Boy. see before just yeah. out of yeah. I mean, instantly become so much more clear. It's just amazing to me. Well that that's it. I mean it was just absolutely astounding. Um I mean we were working for a a famous mystery writer named Steve Barry. He always has New York Times bestsellers and uh, he writes murder mysteries and they're really good. Anyway, um, we had just finished his home, and Jacksonville Magazine said, oh, we want to do a story on his house. And so he said, Steve said, come up, you know, and be a part of it because you know almost more than I do about, the, you know, what you did. We worked for two years on his home as interior designers. So long story short, I always say that too much. Anyway, um, the interview happened, and the woman who was interviewing him wasn't that interested in me because, hey, I was just the lowly one of the interior designers, my, me and my husband. What did I matter, really? After the interview, you know, she was – I was talking to my dog, actually, who's a little Yorkshire Terrier, and I had him on my shoulder. She hadn't seen him because I had had him in a, in a bag 
so he wouldn't disturb the interview. Uh, and she said, oh, my God, I love animals and blah, blah, blah. And I said, whoa, really? And I don't know what possessed me to do it, but I said, I'm an animal communicator. And she freaked out. And she said, oh, my God, i got to write a story about you immediately because in two weeks Jacksonville Magazine is coming out with its yearly dog issue, August 2011. And I said, you're kidding. And she said, no. So, P.S., she did this article, and she said that the thing is that we're not allowed to have one person or business in twice in one magazine. So I'm not going to use your name or your husband's name in the article about Steve Barry's house, but I'll use it at the very end. I'll just use your business name and say you did the interior design. And I said, that's fine. So that way she said I can use your real name. And once she did that and it came out, I mean, not only was I astounded at how that synchronicity just, you know, played out, but my story was put on page 54, and I was born in 1954. <laughs> you know, I mean, you can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. Carl and Jung, synchronicity. You know, Carl Jung, yeah, synchronicity, synchronicity exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Chris? So then I was put on TV and in and, and Jacksonville, and and uh, you know the rest is kind of history. But but I'm still trying to be more quiet. So when Carrie, who wrote the article about me for Jacksonville Magazine, put my Facebook page up like the next day, she said people are hounding me to find out about you, and you know they want to call you, whatever. How they get in touch with you? So she said I'm making you a Facebook page, without asking. So she never put my middle name in, which is Scott which I, you know, I did want in there because it, it, it helps people to know who I am differently from you know, another Eden somebody. Um, anyway, that's what happened, and I said, don't put in anything about my being a psychic medium because I don't want, you know, I've had enough people look at me cross-eyed and say funny things. And, and again, that was four years ago, but I'm now at a point where I really don't care because it's me and I can't stand it anymore. I just have to be real. Like the sign says on my office door, sometimes I try. I pretend to be normal, but it gets boring. <laughs> uh, Chris? So, Eden, what, what is animal communication, and how does it differ from um, other type of psychic work? Well, it's, it's similar in a lot of ways, but I, I actually almost think of it as being a um, psychologist for animals and then for their humans as well. You know, it's it's... Using mental telepathy, I don't know. I'm assuming that as a psychic medium, I get more information, as I'm sure you would understand, because you're a psychic medium as well. But that's what I don't know, because I, I don't really, I, don't, I haven't really had discussions with people who were psychic only and who were doing animal communication. But um, I get telepathically feelings from animals. I get phrases and words and sometimes an entire sentence from them um and many bits of information a lot and i get um i get you know these visuals they send what i would call a picture or an image um because that's how how they work animals are telepathic and as a matter of fact insects are telepathic too and um you know and you know, a lot you, of you people know you're, come you're, to i'm me sorry i'm sorry to interrupt mm -hmm. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you're absolutely right. No. Insects are telepathic. Every mosquito and fly knows that I'm about to swat it and flies away. It's amazing how they do that. <laughs> Get out of town. Oh, my God. Um, but I, I work with an awful lot of animals who, uh, and, and humans who come to me for their pets and working animals who have problems. Sometimes it's just to find out how they're doing. You know, if they really like everything in the house and their food and whatever, if they need something different. But um, the majority of the time, it's uh, my my beloved pet has just crossed over or has crossed over 10 years ago, and I, I'm still mourning that, you know, that my dog, my cat, my bird, uh, and I really want to be in touch with them and, and know that they're okay. And a lot of people need that. Um and a lot of people need to know if it's time for their animal to cross over, you know, what's happening, how they're doing. Um, there are so many different things. Uh, what I try to explain to people is that I am not a, first of all, I'm certainly not a physician at all. I'm not a vet. Uh, and I am not a trainer at all. 
but there, and I'm not a behaviorist, but 